Hey gamers, Maniac here with GameAccess.net telling a story of fail. This is an epic fail and probably one of the most well-known epic fails known outside of the business industry. Uh, when it comes to movie production and things like that, we have been talking about fails all across. It's been a long time coming since we've talked about fails. I know you probably checked the timestamp on the last video. It's been a while. But this has been a fan favorite series. I had a couple of subscribers that, that mentioned to me specifically that they really liked fail. They wanted to see me do more fails. And I thought to myself, well, what would I say for my next fail? There hasn't really been too much going on that people aren't totally already aware of. And so I thought to myself, why not do a fail retrospective on a well-known fail that has kind of stepped out of the spotlight as of recently? Okay. For those of you guys who might be football fans in the NFL, you might know about this little guy called Al Michaels. Al Michaels has been described to me by many people, including the famous comedian Dennis Miller, as probably one of the hardest working guys in football. When I've told that to longtime football watchers, everyone seems to agree with that assessment. So go figure on that. Um, Al Michaels is, I believe, an NFL Hall of Famer. I'm not totally certain about his background, but I know that he's been calling plays for the NFL for a very, very long time. So, like, since before I was born, probably. My father, my everybody is familiar with Al Michaels. And so, as of late, you probably will know him as maybe calling for, like, Monday Night Football or Thursday Night Football, I, Sunday Football. I, I don't remember exactly what he's calling right now. But many people will probably remember that he was specifically calling uh, football games on behalf of NBC network affiliates. And people were enjoying it. Now, about a, a couple of years ago, probably around a decade ago, Al Michaels' contract was coming up. I know. It happens. And rather than renew uh, his contract with N NBC... Uh, the company ABC, America's Broadcasting Channel, the rival network affiliate to NBC, said they wanted to start broadcasting NFL games and they'd like Al Michaels to actually start calling plays for them. They offered Al Michaels a handsome amount of money in order to do it, and Al Michaels agreed. And so he started calling NFL games on NBC. I'm sorry, on ABC. He was no longer on NBC. Not too long after Al Michaels switched from NBC to ABC, NBC started realizing that the ratings on their football games were going down. I know, right? That's sacrilege or something like that. But that's what NBC was noticing. And they attributed the loss of viewership uh, for the games that they were, that they were uh, broadcasting to the loss of Al Michaels. They really couldn't see any other correlation uh, between, uh, between the data for the ratings. They just figured, well, what's different? Al Michaels isn't with us anymore. Maybe people are watching Al Michaels on, on ABC now. And so NBC was prepared to step up um, to basically try to get Al Michaels back. The problem was, was that Al Michaels was locked into a pretty tough contract with ABC, of which he was very happy with, don't get me wrong. But NBC wanted him back and they were willing to negotiate to get him back so that he could start calling plays for NBC again. Now I told you that story to tell you this story and I have to tell you another story that a few of you may not even be aware of, but we're going to talk about the ramifications of this after I tell you this story. About a hundred years ago there was a man named Walt Disney. Yes, that's Walt Disney. I know, right? You're probably saying, oh yeah, I know who Walt Disney is. He was the creator of Mickey Mouse. He's the guy who's got his name on that place called Disneyland. And he's got that, they named Walt Disney World in Florida after him. You're telling me I don't know who Walt Disney is? Yes, I, I understand you all know who Walt Disney is. But before Disney was his own independent studio head that was producing uh, pictures for himself and cartoon shorts for himself, he was a young animator working for a company called Universal Studios. He was doing animation uh, for Universal Studios doing a, using a character that he had created called Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was in a lot of ways a prototype Mickey Mouse. He had um, detachable ears. Uh, but he was different than Mickey in a lot of ways. He has, like I said, he, he had long ears. He looked like Mickey. Well, here you go. This, doesn't he kind of look a little bit like Mickey in a lot of ways? Uh, the only difference being that instead of having round ears, he has long ears. He's still kind of very similar in a lot of ways to it. But there were differences between him and Mickey. Uh, specifically, uh, Oswald had a wife. 
Oswald had children. This was canon. Um, Oswald could detach his ears and, and, and kind of turn them into things. Like he would need like rowing, like oars for rowboats and things like that. Um, he, if he was ever crushed, he could turn himself into multiple different Oswalds that could scamper around until he reformed into a, one large Oswald again. And so Walt Disney was basically producing these Oswald the Lucky Rabbit shorts for Universal. Eventually, Walt Disney became disillusioned working with Universal Studios. I don't know why, and I don't think it's important to the story why. And Disney wanted to break off from Universal and start his own independent company, which would eventually become the Disney Empire. But we're, getting, we're, we're, we're kind of getting a little ahead of ourselves. He wanted Oswald the Lucky Rabbit to be the flagship of that company. However, Universal flat out told him, you can leave Walt." You can leave if you want, but we're keeping Oswald. Disney didn't like that. But he left. And he created Mickey Mouse. And the rest is history. Now, the reason why I told you that story about a story about Al Michaels is basically this. ABC's parent company is Disney. NBC's parent company is Universal. So when two broadcast networks decided they wanted to have a gentleman's discussion about individu an individual's contract, while this on its face was ABC and NBC negotiating, this in reality was Disney and Universal negotiating. So the two groups met. And Universal made it clear to Disney that they wanted Al Michaels back. They were willing to pay uh, whatever it, it cost uh, to get Al Michaels back from, and so that they could start, he could start calling plays for them again. Disney countered and said, you have something that belongs to us. Give it back and you can have Al Michaels. Now, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but this is essentially what was going on. Universal had no clue what they had. Not a clue. They had no idea. None of the board members remembered what the heck Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was. It had been the 1920s since the last time they'd actually done anything with them. But they still, ha they still did indeed have the rights to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. And Disney said, give us back Oswald and you can have Al Michaels. Now I'm sure there was more money and stuff like that that was exchanged. But that's what they wanted. Universal agreed to give Disney back Oswald. And Disney agreed to give Universal back Al Michaels. Al Michaels was essentially traded for a cartoon bunny. And no, Al Michaels will never live that story down. I am not kidding. I think he, honestly though, I think he sees the humor in it. I, I, I've read stories. He, he has admitted it in interviews. Yes, I was traded for a cartoon rabbit. Uh, he's not sore about it as far as I know. He's not sore about it. I, he just thinks it's hilarious. And honestly, I do too. So props to you, Al Michaels, for seeing the sense of humor in that, certainly. And I still will listen to his, uh, to his calls on the NFL when he, plays the, uh, when, he, when he does call for the NFL. Now, what are the consequences of this thing? Well, shortly after that negotiation happened, a man named Warren Spector, who many people will know as the father of the Deus Ex series, was starting a company called Junction Point. And he was scouting around to publishers, basically looking for a way, uh, for a way to publish the next game. And one of the publishers that he had negotiated with was a publisher called Disney Interactive, which is another branch of the Disney company, the Disney Empire, if you will. Now, Warren Spector was a very big old school Disney fan. Loved the original Disney animations back going back to its very beginning. But he knew that he was negotiating with Disney and he didn't want to tip his hand that he was such a big fan. So when he presented some ideas that he had for games to Disney, he didn't include anything that really uh, encompassed uh, any major Disney uh, uh, characters or projects. And Disney came back to him and said, look, if you want to make a game for us, you know we have Mickey Mouse. In fact, if you really want to, you could, we have the rights to Oswald again. We could make, you, could make an Oswald, uh, you, could, you could make an Oswald game. 
Now, Warren Spector knew who Oswald was, had no idea that Disney had gotten the rights back to it, back to Oswald. And so he said, okay, I got an idea for a game, and it's called Epic Mickey. And yes, that's why Epic Mickey exists, because of that negotiation. I don't think this game would have been made had it not been for that whole thing with Al Michaels. Now, what are the ongoing consequences of that? Well, Epic Mickey did get a sequel. I haven't heard it doing too well. Uh, but most people will cite back to Epic Mickey as a really good game, and props for that, certainly. Also, Disney is now able to actually sell Oswald merchandise. Like I said, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, when I went to Disneyland uh, a couple months ago and I saw the newly revamped Buena Vista Street for the very first time, there was a place, uh, there was a store located in the very opening of the, um, of, of the park at Disney California Adventure, which was called Oswald. It looked like an old style retro gas station. Kind of cool, actually. And when I went in there, I noticed that they had all kinds of merchandise and things specifically devoted to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. They had Oswald the Lucky Rabbit dolls. They had Oswald the Lucky Rabbit ears. Disney also retained the rights to many of the original Oswald the Lucky Rabbit uh, shorts in the deal, the ones that Disney had produced, even though they were done by Universal. Universal gave them to, to Disney so that they had the rights included with the Oswald uh, character. So... I had no idea that Disney actually had that merchandise when I went to Disneyland, but when I saw this little Oswald on shelves, I just, and knowing the story that I just told you, I just had to pick it up. So there you guys go. That's the fail. Now you're probably asking yourself, wow, that's kind of a cute story. Where's the failure there? And I'll tell you where the failure is. Universal screwed up. They should never have gotten rid of Al, Al Michaels Go. <laughs> There's the fail. The fail's on the head of Universal. And Disney... Disney had, was pretty smart when they, when they did. The, the failure wasn't with Disney. The failure was with Universal, 100%. 100%. So had, had Universal not let, not let Al Michaels go, none of this would have happened. So you could say, well, this is a failure that I'm actually happy with. It actually worked out for everybody. But it was still a failure on Universal's part, so gotta gotta rip them, gotta got got gotta rib into them or, or or laugh at them about it. Well, I hope you guys enjoy. And plus, I mean, Epic Mickey's a classic. So, what do you say? Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little uh, look down uh, memory lane. The reason why I wanted to tell this story specifically is because my girlfriend is a huge fan of. Uh, YouTube uh, Let's Plays. She loves watching uh, Let's Plays. And there was a YouTube Let's Play I watched the other day. A guy was playing um, this uh, Five Nights at Freddy's knockoff called uh, Five Nights at Treasure Island or something. And um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a derivative game kind of made on uh, this idea of uh, this creepypasta of Disney characters coming back at, at, at like this abandoned Disney place called Treasure Island. And um, during, I guess during night two, he was told, uh, oh yeah, look out for Oswald. And the Let's Player was like, who's Oswald? And it kind of inspired me to, I'm like, who's Oswald? You gotta know who's Oswald. So yeah, that's, uh, that's why I wanted to tell this story. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this fail. I got plenty more videos in the queue coming. Uh, a couple of new series I have in mind, actually, also. So, hope you guys uh, subscribe, like the video if you like it. Please leave a comment. We could have more failures in the future, but for right now, this is what we had in mind. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, guys, my name is Maniac, and this is Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Take care. Over and out.